Hello and welcome to this commentary on Mephisto. My name is Alex Chetta. I am the actor, writer, director and editor on Mephisto. So, what can I tell you about Mephisto? Mephisto was conceived as a short film idea from Norton O'Hara and myself. Norton is our co was our co-director and writer, editor and also he was an actor inside the film as well. He was playing the character of Edward and I was playing the character of Lewis and we also had starring Aaron Atkinson as the teacher, Joseph Mabena as the student and Ronan Ford as the infamous Mephisto. The film was shot between the period of December and January. Now this scene here, this scene was set in Hockley Woods, was shot on the two day, no it was three days, how many days, two, three, four, no. Some days after Christmas, and a few days ago it was actually snowing, so by the time we was there, in the woods, it was very, very cold. And also the weather had, oh, and also the leaves were very cold as well. That body double just laying there with the blood on his chest was me. And that was a fun day playing a body double. The original story behind this scene was we was going to have Aaron do the stunt work for this. He would be, quote unquote, the friend that... Edward would be murdering and then sent to hell for. However, I decided Aaron was preoccupied with something else, so then I decided to take on ownership of the stunt work. And when we did this pulling scene, this wasn't the original one we did, but the first time we'd done it, <laughs> I literally had no idea how to react because of how cold it was. It was probably about two degrees out there in the woods. And it was very, very cold. We didn't actually bury a hole, because if we did, me and Norton would be in a lot of trouble. So my idea for this entire scene was to have it transition from daytime to dusk, to show the period of time of digging the hole, and also to show the period of time of burying one's friend after they've killed one. A very morbid and dark fact for you, but that was what our plan was. And it was fun being pushed down a ditch in the middle of uh, winter. Especially as you had some unprecedented do dog walkers just walking by thinking, what is going on over there? But it was a co cold day, but a fun one. So, and then this was filmed on a Nikon Cool Pix, in which I, what, I'm recording on the documentary right now on the Zach Nassian project, as well as what I'm recording this commentary on. Now this scene here, this scene is one of my favourites for lighting aspects, using the light to show the glimmer of not only the blade but also the blood that was on the blade. This blood wasn't of course real, we used fake blood from Poundland, God bless Poundland. So then we would use this and also that fake blood on my t-shirt as well. And this scene would pre-depict pre the entrance of Mephisto and then we'll cut to our title which will be in free. Two, one, and Norton takes the blade and just goes. Whoosh. The original idea for my idea was to have it literally cut like that, just cut instantly to the title Mephisto. Cut to white to show like not only has he just killed himself, he sent himself into limbo. And in fact, not only did it say editing by Norton O'Hara, but one of the things he forgot to mention was my side of the editing as well. So we did different parts of the film to edit and then we made it into one complete file. Here we have Ronan Ford as the infamous Mephisto and Norton O'Hara as Edward. Fun fact about Edward, Norton's full name is Norton Edward O'Hara, so where he got Edward from was his middle name. However, my middle name is not Lewis, my name is actually my middle name is actually Cornelius. So it would it strange if Cornelius was sent to hell rather than uh, Lewis. So, I've got to have a few notable mentions about Ronan Ford, of course, this will raise your ego, won't it, mate? So, Ronan delivered this entire performance exactly how I wanted to. My only little point of criticism as a director thinking about this entire performance would just be the costuming. Just be changing the costume so then it doesn't look exactly like himself. Although it did work for this film, like looking all red and mysterious and everything, because he is a monster. The devil is a monster. Here we transition to one of my 
scenes that I thought, hmm, could we incorporate <coughs> this? This scene was almost extended by Norton himself, so I thought it was a good job how he incorporated this entire scene of work into the story. However, there are a few continuities, but before I mention that, question. massive shout out to Mr. Joseph Mabena. Thank you for your help, man, and uh, I hope you go on to achieve some great things. And not only that, shout out to our excellent teacher character, Mr. And it didn't transition yet. Mr. Aaron Atkinson, there he is, as the teacher. I hope they all the cast go far in life, and I know they will work hard to achieve what they want to, to achieve their life goals and everything. Now this scene, was, I felt, was massively improvised, but it had the impact of fear, emotion, and just the entire setup on the character of Mephisto and Lewis's struggle in life to show why he wanted to kill himself. And so, as a storyteller, I feel that it was delivered in an excellent way. However, my only grip with this scene, there's too many pauses and also the camera angles as well. It was just one continuously still POV. My idea was a POV from the teacher's perspective. However, that wasn't exactly clear. So I would have added more angles, more different types of zooms and everything inside the film and inside this scene in particular to make it more engaging towards an audience rather than what it is now but it's still engaging obviously it has notable performance of Ronan and the uh, elements of storytelling from Ronan and Norton <laughs> here comes one of my favorite lines from the film I've got two personal favorite lines and there was one of them about students shorts film and that little this was this scene was partly improvised from that little bit of a monologue from Ronan and he did a really good job with that little line. I just felt that line was just funny and then in the next scene coming up comes my second favourite line in which comes from the amazing Lou, uh, Edward character of Norton. My only gripe with Mephisto as an entire product would be the audio. The audio was a little bit off when it came to splicing it and mixing it together. And here comes my favourite line. <laughs> because I'm an atheist, Norton completely improvised that and I had to struggle not to laugh when I was filming that. When I was actually filming this entire scene, we used two cameras. I and mean, throughout that beginning scene between Lewis and Edward, we used two different cameras. One of them is the Nikon Cool Pix, which I've mentioned, which is a Nikon Cool Pix. Oh, that's what it says. The Cool Coolpix camera. And we also used a Canon 500D, which was lent to us by the college and an amazing woman by the name of Wendy Morgan. Wendy, if you are watching this, you inspire me every day and I hope you carry on making amazing work. Mwah. So, back to this scene. So, as you can tell, there's two different qualities with the camera. So, you've got one which is like crisp clear colour and the other is a little bit bit mappy. Also with the camera as well, one was a bit shaky and the other one had a clear stillness to it because the other one was on the tripod and that was the Canon which is in this shot here but if you transition back to the other shot it goes straight to the Nikon with my shaky hands at the helm recording every minute of the film. From this scene as well, this was setting up what was to come down the line. This was almost the mission of the character, the mission of Lewis. So where Lewis of Edward, of where Edward would go and be by the end of the film. It's almost like setting up the deed for the devil, if you will. For those of you who do know me, that is my iPad. Yes, that is my infamous iPad on show. I decided to give it a little bit of a cameo as a prop. It did a very good job as a prop. It did a really good job as a prop. But with these scenes with Ronan, unfortunately, I wanted to do more. But however, due to time constraints, and Ronan was working on another project called The Seagull by Anton Chekhov, we had to cut it short. So then we only had to use certain scenes of Ronan's during the entire film. And he only had limited filming time. But we got all the shots we wanted to. But next time I would want to work on more. If I had more time to work on this entire film. Now the entire filters in the film. In the hell scenes. I've decided to do this. Is to almost give it this 
dream-like state, this limbo-like state in the entire film. So to have these little bits of light just going back and forth and back and forth to show that hell, even though it can be depicted commonly as red, it could also be white. It is this state of a mysterious realm. And here is when the lovely, beautiful iPad Pro comes into play with a few excellent shots. These shots, actually, this shot when we done the close-up of the iPad was actually without Roland. So we had to have Norton carry the iPads to make sure we didn't get Roland in shot because he wasn't even there. And then just have Norton swipe across three random pictures of me, which involved me going to the seafront, River Crouch, and Marsh Farm. So that's exactly where I work. <laughs> Me looking up at the stars, or what was supposed to be fake snow, it was a good picture, yeah. And so then this transitions to one of the, uh, one of the things I still praise Norton on to this day, the excellent editing he has, that I had no idea was coming. I literally saw this film, this cut of the film, when Norton had handed it in and completed it. Going from hell to the forum in South End on Sea, in which we never asked to film, and we just literally put the camera down, put the tripod down, and just started filming. Unfortunately, where we were filming, there was a massive CCTV camera up top where we were, so that's a bit of a ooh, boo boo. This entire shot, I cannot thank Norton enough on how he done it. It was a brilliant shot, and Norton, if you ever go back to the forum, just know there's a comedy book behind you. If you want to start some stand up, eh? Now, this entire shot, what we done was we had the character of Lewis reading a book of train spotting. So, Lewis, the Lewis character is a student, he is a film student, and he was to be inspired by film, but however, he was also depressed. So, that's why the devil wanted him. That's why the devil needs him as a victim to his play. And this shot, I absolutely adore. Just following the eyes, noticing. The change of character from where we saw Edward from his last shot in hell to becoming the devil's personal slave, personal snatcher, if you will, the snatcher of souls. The devil's oh, the name's coming up to me, it's from Ghost Rider. The devil's oh, the soul collector, that's the one, the soul collector. The book I am reading is a book based on the analysis on Danny Boyle's train spotting, so when in between takes I did read a little bit and I got a little bit of uh, fun facts from it. This scene was supposed to symbolise Norton as Norton's flashback to when he, well Norton's character of Edward's flashback in the woods where he killed his friend and then just buried his woods and then sent himself straight to hell. That is my Swiss Army knife not covered in real blood obviously fake blood from Poundland again bless you Poundland so then we decided to use that for our prop. And now comes one of the scenes I still can't believe we actually done. I call it the chip scene. This scene was shot on a very windy South End seafront. In the premise of the scene was that Norton's uh, Edward was supposed to be manipulating Lewis to follow his commands. And how the scene turned out, well, the seagulls, we had seagull establishing shots, which we thought would be a good idea for the credits, but we decided to put it in there as a bit of establishing and time passing. Ah, oh, the Savaloy. The Savaloy, sh the Savaloy shot that I couldn't start stop laughing at. This was literally the take we used. We only done one take because we wasn't willing to buy another Savaloy with how expensive they are. That is actually a genuine reaction of me laughing at the Savaloy, the way Norton was holding it. If Norton, did, Norton literally didn't tell me any of this. He literally improvised this, improvised this scene so much. We improvised it all the way through that scene with the Savaloy, the chips, and the seagulls. Mm. Stop it now. <laughs> Here's a lesson for you kids. If you ever see a man that's dressed in red and offers you chips, don't do eat them because then this happens. The, my original intent for this scene was to have the character of Lewis be manipulated by Edward and that was sort of what I wanted to happen with the bit where he reaches over his hand. My vision for this scene was to have a voiceover play 
of probably some sort of spell, some saying, and just have this voice and a heartbeat playing. However, due to my lack of editing skills and software, I wasn't able to use that kind of thing, and especially with how much time we had. This was our final day of shooting the entire film, this entire scene here. So that means we just rushed straight to the editing room and started editing away. This scene was supposed to be a transition to a few days later on, rather than it looking like the same day. I'm so happy with how this shot turned out. This was supposed to be a continuous to transition into a POV. To have me walk into the beach, look at, watching straight ahead, and then looking down with the camera. However, with this scene, we decided to use elements that we used from our first original day of shooting, or not even shooting, test footage, which was to have an establishing to a wide angle to have this sunset setting on the day and to also have the devil's follower cut in between just like that to have voiceover as well that was another thing we wanted to do but however ran out of time again and so this whole ending, in case you don't exactly get the ending, it's basically the devil wins. The devil gets Lewis, and Lewis kills himself by walking into the sea. Which was a very cold sea, and now I see my feet were dead by that day. The song you are hearing is Charlie Klaus's Hello Eric from Saw 2. And that is Mephisto. A special shout out to, obviously, the team of Mephisto. So that would be Ronan Ford as Mephisto. Aaron Atkinson as the teacher, Joseph Mabena as the student, Wendy Morgan for allowing me to borrow the equipment, and of course to my brother-in-arms, to my co-director, co-writer, co-actor, Norton Edward O'Hara. Mate, keep making the world a better place because you know it deserves a smile. I thank you all for listening to this commentary on Mephisto, and I hope you all have a great day.